Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Uh, congratulations to all the inductees. Thank you, Milwaukee, for doing just a phenomenal job. And also, it's an honor for me to be up here to introduce Mike Vec. Mike is so important to this league. Uh, he, he's he's done things that you know you didn't believe possible, but uh, what he did, he made ind independent baseball something important. National TV would come in. Uh, Sixty Minutes did a thing on the Saints. Uh, we had national writers, so he gave independent baseball a face, and I think it's why we're here today. Um, yeah, uh, Mike, as was mentioned, comes from a great baseball family. His grandfather was president of the Chicago Cubs. His father owned three major league teams. Mike himself got a start in the big leagues, I think, with the White Sox. Uh, he's renowned for having probably the best promotion in the, his in the history of baseball, but also the most disastrous promotion in the history of baseball. You may have heard of Disco Demolition Night, where he, they invited fans to come burn their disco records as, as music fans. Um, and it worked. In a ballpark that sat 50,000, 100,000 fans showed up. In the ensuing chaos, uh, the game had to be canceled. Uh, and for that, Mike was I think blackballed from the major leagues. <laughs> uh, when I first got to know Mike, he was running Pompano in the Florida State League. It was an independent club because they couldn't get a major league affiliate. Uh, but it was doing great, and we were starting the idea of starting a new league, and Mike was interested. He and his partner, Marv Goldklang, and I was trying to sell him on Duluth. I thought Duluth was going to be the best franchise in the league, and which shows you how much I know. But uh, Mike went to St. Paul and saw a ballpark there and fell in love with it and said, we want to put a team there. And I thought, well, you're silly enough to put a team in a major league market with a major league ball, you know, ball club, the Twins, six miles away, go ahead. And he went ahead. And it, it was the St. Paul Saints are legendary on what they've done. For years, they sold out every game. Um, just they may have been the most successful team over the last 30 years in the history of baseball and that's not an exaggeration I don't know any club major or minor that's been that successful um, it's just it's remarkable but you know Mike is known as a promoter and he had a pig that would take baseballs to the umpires uh, he had a PA announcer that did all sorts of ridiculous things. He had a nun in the grandstand that would give him massages. So all this was unique, but what I didn't realize, the, the base, Mike is just a great baseball operator. He knows tickets, he knows concessions, he knows the little things. He's the first ballpark I ever saw that had flowers in it, potted plants hanging in the concourse. I remember him watering them one day. He would go every game, Greek fans coming in, Greek fans as they left the ballpark. And he just, he knew how to run a ball club. He knew how to do things right. But he respected the game. None of his promotions ever interfered with how things went on the field. Occasionally he'd call with an idea. We might once or twice turn him down as a league, but he was, he was great. So to say, it's, it's, for me, it's a great honor to present Mike Vett, newest inductee in the Hall of Fame. Mike? I think it was Groucho Marx who said, you know, I wouldn't be a member of any club that would have me. I don't know what I'm doing here, but you'll notice that I have the exact same jacket that I had. <laughs> I'm definitely a minor league guy because I've been wearing that for like the last 14 years. And <laughs> I want to congratulate all the players. That's what this is about. It's the most wonderful game in the world. And in spite of what we try to do to louse it up, 
it survives. And this is the greatest league in the country. I've been fired by four major league teams. I'm proud of that. It's easy for Nottle to get fired on the field, but in the front office, you gotta really be stupid to get fired. <laughs> and I have managed that with aplomb. So, five other affiliated leagues, and the reason this is the best is because of the people up here, of the people. Miles Wolf, and I'll tell you right out front, is my hero. There is no, in 1990 when I'm, Miles, he'd written a book called Season of the Owl, it was a novel, and the winter meetings were in LA, and I carried that out with me, and I said to my wife, Libby, I'm gonna meet Miles Wolf and get him to autograph the book he wrote, because I loved that book. And when he decided to start an independent league, it was like the Pied Piper. You know, he'd just kind of go, Mike. And I'd go, yes, Miles. And every decision that Miles made was for the good of the league. John Roost and, and Ed Noddle and I, and I got to apologize to Reggie now. My mother died last year, Reggie. What's that got to do with me, Mike? Nothing, Reggie. But every year for 10 years, when you came to town, I would call my mother and I would say, Mom, would you say a couple of prayers for us in St. Paul? <laughs> and finally she said, what's Reggie coming to town? <laughs> so this morning when I said I was gonna talk to you, and was riding over here, I said, Mom, what should I say to Reggie? She said, Tell him you're sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I never prayed for you to get hurt. I just prayed for you not to make the rust that night. <laughs> God, he just owned us. I mean, it was, it's just like terrible thing. And Ed Noddle, here's my guy. Ed Noddle and I had more fun. And as Miles mentioned, when 60 Minutes came, they followed Ed to a local saloon, which was a huge shock to a lot of us. And, um, and they recorded him singing because I'm one of the people who owns his record album. And that made him my hero. But what he did for any community, he lit them up. He made them believe in themselves. When we worked together in Brockton, that was a town that had no self-esteem. And he walked in the first day and he made speeches. If there were three people on the street corner, Ed would stop and talk to them. I mean, it'd be like, thanks for coming. I'd be like, Ed, that's not the group. So before we started, before we started, Ed said to me, you know, you remember that story you used to tell about your father? And I said, you invented that story, Ed. And, and he said, what do you mean? And I said, look, nobody wants to follow Ed Nott. Nobody wants to make a speech after he does. He's just that powerful a personality. But I concocted a story, so I used to follow him. And it went like this. My father had a wooden leg. You cannot laugh at that. I can. It was very funny. He was like Long John Silver. It was like being raised by a pirate. And it was cool. In our neighborhood, my dad could take his leg off. And kids were like, so one day, my father gathered all the kids in the neighborhood, 25, 30 kids, and he said, Mary, go get me a tack hammer. Mary didn't know what a tack hammer, do you know what a tack hammer is? I don't know to this day what a tack hammer is myself. But Mary went and got a hammer. And then Johnny ran to the woodshed and he got a nail. And my old man took that nail and took that hammer and drove that nail into his wooden leg and he looked at all the kids and he went, Go home and see if your father can do that. <laughs> we were the most hated family, and I was telling that dad, and he goes, you ought to use that joke, because that's funny enough to follow me. And I, <laughs> he really did do that. <laughs> you know, I, I didn't just come on this. So my mother and father loved baseball so much that they, they had nine of us. <laughs> you get that? I won't use that one again. <laughs> When the DH was introduced, mom left town. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm sorry, Miles, I, I'm still annoying. <laughs> so, 
Doug Simonek and I had some of the epic battles, and for the first time, because his lovely wife and daughter are here, I'm going to admit that, yes, Doug, I chained that door and cost you $250. <laughs> and Miles, I'm sorry for lying to you. I know I swore I didn't do it, but I lied. <laughs> so. Miles Wolf, the greatest fine that he ever gave, and I'm happy to have been the recipient of it. But Marty Scott loved Doug Simonick, and Doug Simonick loved Marty, and they were the two guys who really understood. They knew about winning, they were fierce competitors, but when the game was over, just like Doug said, they'd have a beer, and they were buddies. Well, one day, Marty gets tossed. And about 10 minutes later, Simonick gets tossed. And Simonick looks over at me and he goes, you know, we have to leave the ballpark when we get thrown out of the game. We can't sit in the stands. We're not supposed to be on the premise. And I said, yeah, what do you have in mind? He said, uh, Marty and I are gonna sumo wrestle next <laughs> inning. So the next inning, the two managers who were supposed to be thrown out come out and sumo wrestle. And it was great theater. But it wasn't nearly as great as Miles Wolf, who was sputtering, stammering <laughs> on the phone before they got off the mats and fined me a thousand dollars. Should have been more. <laughs> Should have been more? <laughs> Man, you are. You, yeah, yeah. We're supposed to age like fine wine, not get more, you know. <laughs> I, I love this game. It's an honor to be up here, and I don't deserve to be up here with these names of these people. But since I am, I just want you to know that, that over the course of 40 years, this has been the most fun I've ever had. I, I can't believe the more immature I act, the better job I'm doing. You know, you blow up some disco records, you get fired, and, and well, I didn't work for 10 years after that, but when I got a job later, I started in Tampa, and I uh, worked for the Devil Rays until I, opening day, I decided to have some indoor fireworks. <laughs> he just said, you kidding, right? I'm like, Actually, Reggie, I'm not. I'm not kidding. I... So we had a lovely start. Larry Doby, first African-American to make in American League, throws out the first pitch. It's a wonderful ceremony. And we shoot some fireworks. But I don't know anything about a dome. And I certainly don't know anything about ventilation. But I know that the guys working the ventilation shafts at Tropicana Field didn't like me because they didn't open the vents. In the seventh inning, a ball was hit, right center field, Randy Wynn. He goes like this. He lost the ball in the smoke. <laughs> it was the shortest press conference in the history of the world after that. They said, Randy, what happened? He said, I lost the ball in the smoke. And Vince Namoli said, Vec, you're out of here. <laughs> Seven month career. <laughs> But I didn't give up because this is a game that forgives. That's what's so wonderful. At the end of the day, you know who won, who lost, and then you get to do it all over again. I wish that life were like that. I wish that I had enough talent to have been named to an all-star team. The only reason I ever worked in this game was because I wasn't good enough to play. And this league Everything that you see happening at the major league level now, rule changes, came from this league. Because people in this league love the game. They weren't marketing experts from Merrill Lynch. They were passionate people who grew up on a dime. Ed Noddle, is too modest to say this, but he, he had a major league offer and turned it down to stay in minor league baseball. Turned it down. You think about anybody doing that now, he did it for an ethical reason, because he wasn't going to be a used. And those were the kind of people that we just had a beer with. And to own every record, 
<laughs> in the American Association. Oh, Reggie, it's just, he looks like he's still playing. I just would love to have one, one hundredth of that talent. So, Mom, <laughs> I'm here with Reggie. I told him I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to thank you all very much. I especially want to thank the committee, but I want to thank Miles Wolf. I love Miles Wolf. Miles Wolf is the man. He has a new book out. If you want to treat yourself to anything, just find something that Miles wrote. He ran this heart with great intellect, but he never let that get in the way of his passion for the game. And that's why we're here today, because he was on the Mayfair. Oh, Mayflower, sorry. <laughs> Mayfair. That's where I'm going later. Thank you all very much. Have a wonderful afternoon. God bless us. Thank you. Thank you.